This evening, the Saints of Artanans Youth Bible Study students from Providence, Rhode Island will remember the forgotten. Follow them as they take you on the road to the cross, Hachi Jampan. And there you will meet face to face with and learn more about the final moments of 13 of these 5,000 valiant men of God who were transferred to a place beyond the grave 94 years ago. According to extensive research done by Dr. George Lelegian, this scholar and historian documented that prior to the genocide, there were more than 6,000 clergymen serving nearly 3 million Armenians worldwide. Between 1915 and 1938, the Armenian church lost 5,000 of these men. Presently, there are only 800 clergymen serving nearly 10 million Armenians worldwide. Krikor Dermanwelian was a priest from Sakra Palu. In 1915, he was killed in the terrible acts of the genocide, along with many others. Sampat Sadechan was born in 1871 in a village called Adabazar. Unfortunately, he was one of the victims of genocide. Harbusak Derkhorenyan was born in 1882, and in 1915, unfortunately, he was thrown into the Mezre prison with hundreds of other intellectuals and clergy. There, he was severely beaten and tortured. Har Busag, along with Busag Vartabed Tenekejian and famous teacher Bujikanyan, were taken out of prison and dragged through the streets for four hours in their bare feet. They were killed with axes and swords. He was martyred at age 33. Ardavast Vartabet Kalanderian. He was born in 1876 as Yeprem and attended the Armish Seminary and was ordained in 1901. He was a bright scholar and a poet and became Arashnort of Tokat and later Arashnort of Edessa, also known as Urfa. He was a prominent leader and during the self defense battles of Urfa, Ardavast Sarpazan was arrested, imprisoned, and killed. Megertich Vartabet Chulgadian is from Dikranagert. He was born in 1871 as Hovnan. In May 1915, he was imprisoned and tortured with three other priests, the Catholic Arach North, and 980 other Armenians. He was separated from the others and forced to walk through the streets of Dikranagert, his face blackened with ashes, a bell hung around his neck, and a muzzle on his face. He was then taken to the mosque across from the government building, where they poured fuel on him and burned him to death together with nine other Kahanas. Rest in peace, martyr brothers. Rest in peace. During the battle, you fell mortally wounded, but your holy memory lives like an everlasting fire in the souls of all Armenians. A fire that will encourage generations of Armenians to walk on your path toward a bright future. Rest in peace, martyr brothers. Rest in peace. My heart is so heavy, I don't know how to speak. And I'm sure that you have the same feeling now when with your spirit and mind you traveled to 1915 to the time when our grandparents, one and a half million Armenians and among them his clergy, gave their lives. On this occasion I want from deep of my heart to thank Yeretskin and my beloved children. Like the Yeretskin, I knew them when they were younger and now they are grown-ups. And thank you very, very much that you brought us this beautiful world to us. Yes, it was a great loss. Incomparable. We lost all these people, and especially the clergy. But while you were presenting these people, I saw that for our survival, how important is the religious guidance. And the Turks knew that. 
And this is why they wanted to axe our church and our intellectuals, and by that, to reach to our families. <coughs> the genocide did not bring the end to us. They could not eradicate from this world our nation. They killed the body, but they could not kill the spirit. They could not kill the faith which kept us alive. And the same faith gave us hope. One thing, as Yereskin said, we have to remember that these people did not die in vain. When we say that, they have a message right now to everybody, especially this month when we are commemorating our genocide. And the message is very, very clear. To abide to our faith with strong hope, never lose hope, defend and practice our values and adhere strongly to our identity. If we live like that, then nobody can kill us. If we live like that, we are always victorious.